good. Hello, everyone out there. VCers, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holiday. Uh, I have Big John here coming over for the, the holiday weekend. We're, we're doing uh, some videos. Uh, today we're going to talk about the classic album, one of my favorite live albums of all time, the Allman Brothers. Live, live at the Fillmore, at the East. Fillmore East. Double is, double album. This is an iconic album. Iconic. One of the best live albums of all time. If I was to do a Desert Island, de a Desert Island live album segment, this would this would have to be included. It's a double album. There's jams in it. Um, there's a there's a 22 minute jam uh, in memory of Elizabeth Reed, etc. We'll go over the tracks. It's a mixture of jazz, country, pop, folk, pop, rock. Um, just an amazing chemistry between these band members. And of course, you have the iconic Allman Brothers, Dwayne and 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 Greg. You have Dickie Betts. You have the rest of the group, two drummers. It was um, recorded in March of 71 over two nights. The album was later released that year in 71. It was actually released on July 6th, and it went to gold almost immediately in October of 71. It later went to platinum uh, sales as far as records in the U.S. in, in I believe, in 94. So it took some time to reach to that level. But this album influenced so many people. It actually influenced uh, the jazz fusion movement. Uh, members of the Miles Davis uh, quartet, like Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, who later went on to go into Weather Report, said that this album actually gave them a kind of impetus to do what we later what we what we call now jazz fusion of a jazz uh, jamming rock chemistry that is so intuitive of what we hear of what we hear on this album. Now this album is iconic and we should have talked about it months ago on the channel, but a, a viewer, Brendan out there, asked me to do a quick talk about this record. So we're going to do it. So hats off to Brendan for picking this great topic. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, we're going to show some of the uh, the records that I have. I have a few copies. These are Capricorn copies. Uh, they're the brown label. Is it the brown Capricorn? Yeah, the, the brown label. Can you show that, John? They, they come with the, the uh, brown inner Capricorn inner sleeve like this, front, back. And the label. Yeah, hold that. A little closer there, we can see it on, on green right there. Yeah, there it is. You can see the Capricorn yeah. label. Um, but when it was originally released in 1971, it had a pink Capricorn label. And then if you want, that's the desired one. They're very difficult to find in good condition because people who originally had this album played College the hell kids, out of it. People, people in Nam College, because this was a perennial. I heard this early junior high because I had some friends that had older brothers. My older and, brother had a quad. His older version. brother had a quad. I he also, gave it to me. I have a quad copy of this. Thanks to him. If you ever see the quad A track of this, it goes for big bucks. It probably goes for over a hundred dollars for the A track quad. There's still people out there that have their quad A track setups and maybe quad. LP setups. I've never seen this on quad LP, but your brother has it. No, I you have, have it now. now. I you have it now. now. This is an interesting um, footnote to talk about the record. As you know, the record's a gatefold. John, can you show that gatefold? Sure. It's got some great photos of the band, has some credits. This was produced by the legendary Tom Dowd. See that? And originally, uh, the, the people at, what was it? It was originally Capricorn or Atco? Um, Capri Capricorn was Atlantic, was Atlantic and originally, Atco, then. but it was later purchased by Polydor Records. Okay. Um, and when this came out on CD, the CD were pressed by, they were made by Polydor. Well, I have a US. Polydor pressing that I'll show you. We have a Polydor pressing. And, and, and it's not just the Almonds, but the, a lot of Almond related bands like uh, Derek and the Dominoes originally That's came true. out. That's true. Uh, on Atlantic, and then when it was reissued, it came out on on Poly the RSO, which was part of Poly Polydor Group. But the desirable one would be a pink. But these sound fantastic. 
and and the and the 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 one and two records is one and four and three and two because of the changes. So yeah, a lot, a lot, a, yeah, a lot of people say, why isn't this? Why isn't side first record one and two? It's because back in the day you had the record changer and, and you would dropped. just put it on and it would drop and then you just flip it and you'd have the complete uh you know pro that's one of the uh, reasons why it's very hard to find a really perfect pink capricorn well you'll pay you'll pay a premium you pay a premium you'll pay for a premium vg, for a VG premium. one with yeah, some scratches yeah. and scuffs right. and before i forget uh thank you for watching thank you for the subscriptions and the likes we we really uh, it, over ex we're, we can't thank you enough for the uh the support that i'm getting on some of these uh, segments that we try to do and try to, you know, show our records, educate some new vinyl collectors. Everyone in my generation know this album. This album uh, crossed all boundaries. When I worked in the record store in Vogel's Records, um, white people bought this record, black people bought this record, Hispanic people bought this record. Southern uh, rockers, blues rockers. It didn't matter. This was, uh, and this started the Marshall Tuckers, the Leonard Skinner's, they were all influenced by these kids from Macon, Georgia. And they were so good. The chemistry was so, inf so infectious. And, and, and if you all, if you ever read Greg Allman's book, it's a wealth of information. Greg was Dwayne's brother. And when Greg was feeling down, he was sick or something. Uh, Greg actually gave him an album. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the name, but uh, I have to look it up, but it's a Taj Mahal record, which I have that featured Ry Cooter on slide. And he slipped it under the door or gave it to Dwayne. When Dwayne emerged like a week later, it was as if he had been to the crossroads and sold his soul to the devil because he could play, he started getting on slide guitar and that you hear all that slide guitar on this record. So this was their third record. Um, and this artistic, critically acclaimed, it was number 49 on the Rolling Stones top 500 may have slipped up and down. That was a few years ago. It's also been selected for preservation, uh, John, in the Library of Congress. So that, that's an amazing feat. That's how influence, that's how much influence this record, uh, you know, throws upon us all. Um, I, I actually met Wilson Pickett, and Wilson Pickett told me some stories about Dwayne Allman because Dwayne Allman was a session guitar player. He played with Aretha Franklin, right? Mm -hmm. Aretha Franklin, he played on uh, Boss Skaggs records. He was actually with, played with uh, Wilson Pickett. He did a mean solo on Wilson Pickett's Hey Jude, which is one of the best uh, renditions, covers of Hey Jude, you know, next to, yeah, yeah pull these up, next to uh, the Beatles. And Wilson Pickett told me that he was such an easygoing guy. He came into the studio, plugged in. They didn't know what they had. Here's you got, you know, you're at a soul session, and you got this long-haired guy with a, I guess he had the beard, the mutton chops, that whole bit. Plugged it in, and it was just mesmerizing. So, you know, it's it's and it's really a shame. You now, all you all you folks out there know the tragic uh, ending of of Dwayne Allman, but you can look it up. And um, you know, the the thing was. Dickie Betts and the rest of the band uh, persevered. They went on to to bigger and better things. But for me, this is the this is the Allman Brothers, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the cover, John. Uh, this cover uh, was shot by a photographer. Uh, his name was Jim Marshall. This was actually shot at their home in Macon, Georgia. And if you um, see, you have uh, some of the some of the gear that they would take on their on their uh, on the tour, and it's uh, and the legend is that Jim Marshall actually stenciled this um, Almond Brothers into the the cases. I always thought until I researched it that this was out in front of the Fillmore or in the back lot of the Fillmore where the buses pull up. But Marshall apparently got them out of bed early. They took the shot. You could see they're all bleary eyed, and on. Um, that one, the, I think uh, Dwayne is hold, holding a bag of uh, contraband. And if you look at the back, uh, Dwayne said, let's get the road crew. Let's let's give the road crew some uh, kudos. And the road crew's on back. 
So it's a, it's just a, an amazing. If you open up the gatefold, um, you can see the both you know both sides right there. And uh, the person here, his name was uh, Felton or, or something. He was actually a road crew guy, but he was on trial for a crime in jail uh, pending trial. So they just superimposed uh, his photo up there, which was really cool. And that's the, that's the original band. So that's a little bit about the uh, jacket cover. I'm going to show you a rarity, which I just discovered today when I was going through my um, – Maybe it's this one. Um, yeah. This album is a later reissue. What's this, on Polydor? Polydor, yeah. This is on Polydor, but if you see up here, the credits are in that corner there. Now, interesting, it's not a gatefold. To cut back costs, they consolidated it to a single sleeve, right, John? Can you hold that mm -hmm. up? Single, single sleeve. Yeah, you don't and, have a gatefold. And there's the Polydor. Polydor label. label. U.S. Polydor. U.S. Polydor. They're very nice pressings. Well, you know, I have, I have three or four or five pressings of these, and sometimes I, I just pull a pressing out, and I've never been disappointed. Um, just for instance, Statesboro Blues by Willie McT McTell. Just, just incredible. Done somebody wrong. Uh, Elmore James wrote that. Stormy Monday, T Bone Walker, Greg Mark. Side two, You Don't Love Me by Willie Cobbs. Hot Atlanta, which was the Allman Brothers and Dickie Betts pens. Um, In Memory of Elizabeth Reed, which was Dickie Betts, which is just an incredible jam. It's 12 minutes and 36 seconds of pure bliss. Then you have Whipping Post, which was written by Greg Allman. Uh, 22 minutes and 40 seconds. So yeah, it takes up a whole side. It takes up a whole side. It takes up a whole and, side. And it's this, great. There's, a, there's a special edition on CD, maybe on, on vinyl, that includes the entire concert with some, you know, with songs that obviously weren't included in this. Originally, um, I was I was speaking before, but I got sidetracked. Uh, Atlantic and Atco, I guess, and Capricorn wanted to release this as a single record. And Tom Down stepped in and said, to keep the integrity of this music and the jams, it has to be a double album. And double albums were expensive. They weren't always successful. There wasn't a lot of double albums, uh, you know, back in the day. But today, this would this may be a single record because everything's stretched out now on, on two LPs, Better Fidelity, et cetera. But this was originally... Uh, intended for a single record, and they said it has to be a double record, and the rest is is history. So, um, but let's just talk about the music. What did you think about this this album, John? Oh, it's wonderful. It's got blues. It's got jazz, country. It's got a nice mix. The vocals. Uh, uh, it's the just, southern. The southern it's got vocals. That southern Georgia. Uh, it's the almonds at their peak. This is probably I consider this probably their best album. I love this album. I love this album. I don't think they've surpassed this album. The previous album. They have good albums. They have some yeah. really good albums. But don't but this, forget, Dwayne was. I like well, brothers and Dwayne, sisters a lot. Dwayne was on some of Eat a Peach, and that was I, I believe Dwayne was killed um, before Eat a Peach, which was right in between. Um, but. These records, because of, of our age, we listen to these records in junior high, and high school, college. Actually, it's never been off the turntable in fifty, in almost over fifty years, which is saying a lot. Uh, just as a footnote, I, I had indicated that these were re recorded live over. I think there was actually three nights, and I think they called these sessions from two nights. There's mixed. There's mixed, um, there's mixed information on that, but let's say two or three nights. They were only paid, the band was paid, $1,250 for each show. Now, that was in 71, but the equivalent using the inflation indicator, that was about a little less than $10,000. Is that for each member or for the total band? Total band. Wow. Total band was... Ten thousand dollars. Something this good to, to 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 no to play. 
to re- to to play live. That's all they got. Yeah, to now today, in, the to... Rolling Stones or Taylor Swift could make five million dollars a show, six million dollars no, a more show. More than that. More like, than that. Like I'm just fifty I'm, million. Like it's it's mind boggling that back then they were paid the equivalent. Uh, you know that that huge band, that sound, and that and that drive. They, no two shows ever sounded alike because they had a fusion. They had a chemistry that was unsurpassed. And if you listen to these records with with headphones or or a, a decent system, you are going to go nuts. So if you don't know about All My Brothers Live at the Fillmore East, you know, pick up the CD. If you're a vinyl guy like we are, get the get the vinyl. You can get an OG copy for probably a, a fair price online. And probably the, yeah. the brown, the brown Capricorn, yeah, the which brown. is a mid seventies or early mid, well, mid seventies reissue. It still sound really good. Don't forget this and, record went platinum. And I just want to remember because it's the holiday seasons. Thanks to Santa Claus, I got another live Almond Brothers album, double album I did, I from nineteen seventy one. A special record store day release. It's really cool. I, I did, can't wait to hear I it. I did. Uh, Give that to John, my brother-in-law here. Big John loves you, Almond Brothers. That's funny. I forgot about that. I actually, yeah, I you, bought two at Record Store yeah, Day. Yeah, a nice record store and, and, day. And if you know, and my, from my, that same tour. And my friend, and I can't wait to hear that. If what was that recording? I have to go look at it. All right. But, but, well, it. anyway. I, but anyway, I, the, we just opened up the gifts and, and I saw it. Almond right, Brothers from and, 1971. And, and then I got the request from Brendan to do this review. Brendan's going to put it on his channel. Hopefully we'll 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 sell some of these segments. But my point was with the Almond Brothers, I bought two. I said I gotta get this for Big John. I want a copy. And you know, record store day, the limited. Luckily, I go to a, a record store that has a pretty good quantity, but they only allow you one record of each, which is fair. I don't mind that. So I had to give it to Don, my who, who was with me, my partner in crime. I said, Don, you know, get this for me, and I'll and I'll reimburse you. Or I gave, I actually maybe gave him my credit. I think I gave him my credit card. So, um, but that's it. But that's, that's right. So we'll have to listen to that and talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But here it is. Almond Brothers. The back is the crew. And like I said, this was actually around the, uh, somewhere in Macon, Georgia, as far as uh, my research. Uh, could be accurate, could be not. This is just our opinions on how we feel about this record. We're not telling you feel, you're gonna love it. Very strongly, great you're, you're, album. It's one one of the iconic live albums of all time. It and is for, and, and jam band rock. It's a brilliant. Record. It is mouth watering. You, it's across the board. I I I talk to people ten years older than me, twenty years younger than me, uh, fifteen years older than me, and they're in their seventies. They. If you're if you're a uh, an Americana blues guy, this is blues. That they they take influences from Muddy Waters, um, Robert Johnson, William Mattel, and they mix it. They fused it, and it, it sounds fresh today, right? Oh yeah, it sounds fresh today. It's never dated. It's never dated. But that's it. We've used up a lot of time. Just thank you for watching. If you haven't subbed. Please do so. It really helps us out. And if we don't speak, see you, uh, have a wonderful holiday. And uh, John and I will be doing a couple more of these in the next couple of days. So uh, we have Elvis here. We have Santa. Elvis can't talk because the copyrighted reasons that Santa. Is, Santa gave Tony some Elvis. Yeah, I got some year. nice. I got some nice Elvis. Both of them. Both Elvis. I got some nice. <laughs> I got Elvis Costello and the King. So I can't do any wrong. All right, John. Thanks for dropping in. Good job, and we'll talk to you soon. Signing off, LP Zeros. Thanks again. Ciao. That was fun.